Hello scholars, welcome to today's Manuscript Spotlight. Today, we'll be looking at the Vatican Codex. This is a Greek codex that originally contained the entire Old and New Testaments, and is commonly accepted to be one of the most important Greek manuscripts in existence. While some aspects about this manuscript are similar to the Sinai Codex, which I have covered previously, I believe the Vatican Codex has many unique aspects that make it worth examining separately. The Vatican Codex was written around 325 AD and is nearly complete, missing only 71 out of its original 830 leaves. It is the oldest of what are now known as the Four Great Unsealed Codices, the only surviving codices that originally contained the entire Bible in Greek. The entire codex is available to view for free online, with the missing leaves replaced by pages transcribed in the 15th century. I've included the link in the description. Interestingly, the manuscript is written with three columns per page instead of two. There are only two other Greek codices written in that format that are known today. It's written in Biblical Unseal style script in Scriptio Continua, both of which I had discussed in my Sinai Codex video. It was originally written in a style very similar to the Sinai Codex, other than the number of columns per page, but has been stylized over the at least 500 years it's been housed at the Vatican Museum. Some examples of this stylization can be seen here at the beginning of the Book of Hebrews. If you're familiar with manuscripts, this may look more like something written closer to the Middle Ages, with colorful stylization, an enlarged initial letter, and accent marks over the text. However, the original manuscript was written very simply with none of this stylization, and these additions were all made by later editors. In fact, if you look very closely, you can see the normal-sized original Pi that was rubbed out to be replaced by the enlarged initial. I'm going to do a brief reading from Hebrews 1.3, since there is a humorous note related to this verse that I want to point out. The manuscript reads, Has on apaugasma tes doxes kai caracter tes hypostaseos auto, fanaron te tapanta toremati tes donameos auto. And now for the translation and he is the radiance of his glory. Has on apaugasma tes doxes. And the exact representation of his nature. Kai caracter tes hypostaseos autu. And reveals all things. Faneron te tapanta. By the word of his power. Toremati. Tes dunameos autu. If you're familiar with the text of Hebrews, you may have noticed something out of the ordinary here. This word, fanron, to reveal, should be feron, to bring or bear. As these are both common Greek words that only have a difference of two letters, it's easy to see how a scribe could accidentally substitute one for the other. If you examine the manuscript closely, you can see that a later scribe noticed this mistake and corrected it but that it was later changed again back to the original, along with this amusing marginal note. Amatestate kaikake afes ton palayon me metapoie, which means, fool and knave, leave the old reading and do not change it. <laughs> Evidently, this later scribe didn't appreciate someone editing a manuscript that was already hundreds of years old. Very similar to how nearly anyone today would react to someone trying to correct the spelling of a museum artifact. The Vatican Codex is one of the most important manuscripts for the text of the Septuagint, the Greek Old Testament. So for my final selection, I'll be reading from Psalms 1, 1 through 2. The manuscript reads, Makarias aner has uk ephoruthe en bule asebon Kai en hado hamartalon uk este, kai epi cathedra loimon uk ekatisen, al en tonomo curiu to thelema otu, kai en tonomo auto meletese hemeras kai nuktas. And now for the translation. Blessed is the man, Makarias Aner, 
who walks not. Has uk ephoruthe in the counsel of the wicked, en bule asebon, nor stands in the way of sinners, kaen hado hamartalon uk este, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, kai epi cathedra loimun uk ekatisen. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, al e en tonomo curio to telema auto, and on his law, kai en tonomo, he meditates day and night, auto meletese hemeras kai nuktas. I hope you've enjoyed getting to read this incredibly significant manuscript firsthand and have enjoyed seeing the very human side of scribes having to decide whether to correct a manuscript or preserve it as is. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again on the next Manuscript Spotlight.